The 6th of August 1997 marked the anniversary of the atomic explosion on the city of Hiroshima. And on the same day, the landing of the space explorer Pathfinder on Mars. Notwithstanding this, it appeared to be a normal day in Mexico City. Lomas de Chamiza is a high-class residential area of the city. It is about 5 p.m. and the sky is grey. Suddenly a strange floating object can be seen close to the Royal Reforma Laureles buildings. The object was filmed by an amateur cameraman. On the 26th of September 1997, the film was delivered to the offices of the Terza Millenio, the Third Millennium, a well-known television program shown on the network Televisa, Mexico, and run by Jaime Mossan, the famous researcher and reporter. In the letter which accompanied the package containing the video cassette, the anonymous cameraman explained that he had witnessed the event from his office completely by chance, together with a colleague. He told how he had rushed for the office manager's camera once he had realized what was happening, but asked that his name be kept a secret as he was afraid of losing his job. He therefore entrusted Jaime Malsan with the film confident in his reputation as a professional and honest researcher. After the showing of the film for the first time, the UFO community worldwide was astounded. This was the most astonishing film of an unidentified flying object that had ever been seen. The video showed a classical saucer-shaped object surrounded by a strange circling halo. In the film, initially, the object can be seen stationary close to a group of buildings at about 60 to 80 meters from the ground. It then moves to the right with an apparent anti-clockwise revolving motion before disappearing behind another building. With the help of the reporter and researcher Daniel Munoz and the Terza Millenio team, Jaime Molsan started investigations into this sighting. And after a few days, they found the first eyewitnesses. The descriptions given of the sighting are of fundamental importance. Above all, because they were given before seeing the film. Thanks to the extraordinary investigative work carried out by Jaime Mousan and the extensive cover given by the Televisa, the Mexican population, is surely one of the most informed about what is happening on our planet regarding UFOs and any attached phenomena. A result which counts Mousan among the most courageous and able divulgers of our time. The Las Lomas video is one of the most revealing chapters in a wave of sightings which have involved the entire planet from the first hint in the late 1980s with the manifestations in Belgium's skies. This kind of event, since the eclipse of the sun in Mexico, the 11th of July 1991, has increased immensely. The eclipse lasted almost seven minutes and is classed as one of the most important astronomical events of the century. The importance of such an event was also recognized and prophesied by one of the most knowledgeable ancient populations, the Maya. For them, the eclipse would have indicated a step towards a new era, in which there would be a complete renewal of man and his planet, thanks also to meetings with wise beings from the stars. A prophecy that, amazingly, coincides with the messages received by contactees, with traditions of other ancient cultures, with prophetic writings coming from many religions on our planet, and with divine messages received during the last 2,000 years of our history. This mass of information and the signs that embrace the various aspects of science, the spirit and the culture seem to be intimately related, despite their apparent different exteriors. This interdependence requires an organic plan, probably developed by a super-intelligence that is operating with major intensity in respect to our world. A plan that becomes clearer in its dynamic cause and demonstration and finds the appearance of unidentified flying objects one of the most fascinating aspects for our conscience. 
a fascination that will be further fulfilled and stimulated viewing the extraordinary vision offered by the best films of the UFOs in the 90s. The total eclipse of the Sun, which occurred in Mexico on the 11th of July 1991 and correctly predicted by the Maya, formed, according to their knowledge, one of the focal points in the evolution of humanity. This eclipse marked the death of the fifth Sun, a period characterized by declining values, both morally and spiritually, that obscured the true conscience and acclaimed the success of materialism. The death of the fifth son and the birth of the sixth would have marked the start of a golden age, a period of great change on earth, thanks to meetings with wise beings from stars. Such a prophecy is contained in the Dresda Code, one of the ancient codes saved from destruction of this population's culture. In fact, after the total eclipse of the Sun in Mexico on the 11th of July 1991, sightings of UFOs throughout the world multiplied to such an extent that it can be said to be one of the greatest waves in history. Thanks to this, documentary films and photographs showing such events have likewise increased, giving proof of a phenomenon that is not yet accepted as fact by the majority of the population. The event of the 11th of July 91 was preceded by a first phase of UFO activity, an announcement of greater things to come after the Grand Eclipse. Amongst various events that preceded the eclipse, there is the following case, which happened near to Puebla City, about 130 kilometers from Mexico City. On the 7th of July 1991, some policemen followed a bright object outside the town, convinced that it was dealer's plane. They filmed it and took photographs, hoping they could identify it. They were amazed when they saw the results. My colleague shouted to me, look, there's a light, it's a plane. I stopped the car and we got out and our photographer took pictures in the hope of showing an identity number. After the films were developed, the photographer said, look what came out. And I jokingly asked, what's this? I can't see any plain identity numbers. What is it? A similar object was photographed some months afterwards, precisely on the 30th of October 1991, by Dr. Carlos Perez and a friend. They were in the volcanic area of the state of Puebla. On the 13th of January 1998, over Mexico City, an object similar to the UFO, which we have just shown, was filmed. As can be seen, the strange object is stationary above a building. Then, after some time, it moves to the left and is clearly visible above the city lights. Let's go back to the 11th of July 1991, the day of the eclipse. While many people prepared a variety of instruments to follow the event, a strange object remained immobile above the city. In this film, made by engineer Guillermo Alleguin, we can appreciate the circular shape, with a dome on the upper part. The right side is brighter, which means it has a sun-reflecting surface, and is therefore likely to be of metallic nature. The underside is in the shade, from which we can deduce that it is three-dimensional. 
you can see clearly that it is not a plane, helicopter or an exploratory balloon. The shape can be recognized as being very similar, even although it is filmed at a distance, to the source of films six years later, above the Las Lomas area of the same city. The same type of swirling halo that surrounds the object is evident, revolving around its axis. During the eclipse, at least 15 videos of the object were made, of which seven were clear. The films are witness to its presence from before the eclipse to its end, a period of over 10 minutes. In these, we can evaluate the difference in brightness between the object and the stars, both in the clear and dark stages of the eclipse. And when the eclipse is over, when due to the strong sunlight, it would be impossible to observe the stars. The object can still be seen, and at the end, it can be observed in front of clouds, which would not be possible with stars or planets. The video taken by Eduardo Mejia is important because it shows the object before and after the eclipse. Al principio habían dicho que se trataba de una estrella. My family at first said that it was a star, but I continued filming out of curiosity. I didn't think it could be a UFO. It was only afterwards that I realized it could be something strange. The film by Eric Aguilar is also very interesting for its clarity, and once again you see the object shining in the sunlight. The film taken by Fuentes, an engineer, is the only witness to the object departing. Watching the film at its original speed and in colour, it is difficult to establish if the movement is of the object or the camera. But with the use of the computer, we can show high on the right the sun's rays, which we can use as a reference point. In this way, we establish the camera was still, and then see the astonishing acceleration of the object as it departs. Evidence that clearly shows the non-terrestrial nature of the vehicle, until that time stationary over Mexico City. Experience. It forces us to see that we're not alone in the universe and that there are other intelligences out there that have breathtaking abilities also, and that they've realized their abilities far more fully than we have. Also, during the eclipse over Puebla, films were taken showing objects with the same form, reflection, shades and surrounding ring identical to those seen over Mexico City. This sighting was only a coincidence. We realized what it was only after we watched on TV the films made in Mexico City. The exceptional event is made even more interesting in another document produced above Mount Ansen, Japan, on the 23rd of November 1991. The almost identical characteristics of the objects filmed above Mexico City, Puebla and Japan by people who did not know each other and who lived hundreds of kilometers away from each other are elements that must be taken into consideration by science, by the media and by governments the world over. Their silence and indifference leads us to seriously question the credibility and reliability of the work that these organizations are supposed to carry out to the benefit of the human community. A community that remains cheated out of knowledge that could signify a positive change, capable of provoking such useful thoughts and knowledge as will make us leave the serious situation in which we find ourselves. The governments can't deny anymore that aliens are real. So now, to avoid contact, they try to spread fear. That's why a government-controlled UFO organizations like MUFON are spreading so many horrible stories, stories creating fear. And um, why they don't want us to be in contact? Because when we realize we are not alone, we realize we are just one mankind among millions of mankinds in the universe. And we 
recognize our common unity because there, there's no difference if you are Ecuadorian or Italian or German or Jewish or whatever because we are all mankind, we are all children of the earth and if you realize it, they can't play the games like nationalism, they can't continue to play um, having control over us and that's what they don't want. In the month of August, in the zone of Atlixco and Metipec, in the state of Puebla, there were innumerable signs of unidentified flying objects. One of the videos resulting from these sightings is practically identical to that made in Belgium in 1989 and 1990. These sightings were also confirmed by the police and by the same Belgian aviation company that tried to intercept the objects without success due to the incredible speed with which they disappeared when followed. The incredible series of films that feature objects of this type has grown over the years. This film was made in Georgia in the town of Tbilisi in December. Guillermo Gemetz, a professional cameraman for Pablo's TV Super 3, then filmed the same object again above the city of Puebla on the 12th of February 1992. The camera was fixed to a level tripod, therefore there are no camera movements except those required to follow the object. The movements that you see are only those of the object itself. This event is amongst the most interesting and significant of this exceptional wave of sightings. On the 19th of May 1992, some of the inhabitants of Uchipila, Mexico, were awoken during the night by dogs barking very loudly. Once outside, they saw this strange object suspended above the town. The film of Uchipila testified to a fact already noted by the researchers, and that is the characteristic reaction of animals when these objects appear. An event that was also repeated in the case of the sighting in Las Lomas area and which we will discuss in greater depth later on. Let's see it once again with the original sound. Arturo Diaz Soyano filmed a very similar appearance in the same month of May 1992 above Mexico City. Once again at Mexico City on the 20th of January 1995, this very interesting film was made. At a certain point, the object becomes opaque, making it possible to clearly distinguish its triangular form. It is the first time that it can be seen this clearly. Another very similar UFO was seen in Russia on the 19th of February 1997 in the town of St. Petersburg. The object was filmed by various people and it is estimated that its breadth was approximately 300 meters, whilst the sighting lasted more than 50 minutes. There are at least seven films that feature the object in existence. The images that we now see were made with a telescope. An operator of Ecuador's TV Gamma Vision filmed a very similar aircraft following telephone calls from people to inform the TV of the presence of a strange object in the sky. Above all in Mexico, during the last few years, films have been made that have been very surprising due to the considerable number of objects present. The Mexicans have defined these true and real formations whose configuration seems to reproduce the constellations as flotillas, or little fleets.
The first video that shows them was made in Mexico City on the 27th of October 1992 by Mr. Ulises Trujillo. As is evident from the video, the objects, apart from ascending, also demonstrate a relative movement between themselves. At a certain point, one of the objects increases its speed and overtakes in vertical flight the other slower object, another witness to the great technical capacity of these aircraft. The second film was made on the 24th of October 1994 by Mr. Thomas Islas, again above Mexico City. We can see the change in the formation just as the cable appears to the left of the screen. On the 7th of December 1994, Mr. Alex Fernandez Cooper filmed a new flotilla above Tampico, a town in the Mexican state of Tamaulipas. The same Mr. Cooper on the 24th of January 1995 made this marvellous film of a flotilla. An incredible number of objects are present in this film made in 1996 in the Mexican town of Najarite. The original videotape was already damaged, but even so, it remains of great interest. Martin Valencia made this film on the 18th of May 1997 in the town of Leon in Mexico. Once again, we can see, in full daylight, a huge number of objects above the skies of Mexico. These scenes were filmed in Mexico City by Emilio Granados on the 14th of June 1997. The film is particularly interesting for the type of object that it features. We can clearly see the spheres below the clouds while one, closer, shoots past below the others and, at a certain point, a large number of totally dark objects appear. An exceptional event filmed here for the first time. This event seems to be an exact replica of something that happened in the year 1500 above Basilea and was reproduced in the newspapers of the era. We can see, in fact, people observing a large number of clear and dark spheres in the sky. These particular formations were also filmed during 1998. Thanks to the research carried out by the anthropologist Michael Heisemann, some very interesting documents about UFOs have recently come to light, which were filmed in Germany on the 24th of August 1990, close to the town of Greifswald. The event has had thousands of eyewitnesses and has been immortalized in five different films. It is not entirely clear if the two formations are of different objects or the lights of a single object, but either way, the Greifswald case can be considered as one of the most important confirmed sightings in Europe. It is important to stress that the German town is home to a nuclear base, sites to which these beings have dedicated great interest since the very beginning of the history of UFOs, motivated by the anxiety for the extreme danger of this type of energy and for the irresponsible lightness with which man is using it. Often, a characteristic that identifies flying objects as possible UFOs are the particularly unusual movements which accompany these objects. This element is of most use when, due to the distance involved, it is not possible to determine the form. An example of this can be seen in this film made in Mexico in 1992. Here we can see an object which, with amazing facility, stops instantly mid-flight then suddenly accelerates to withdraw from view, demonstrating a technology superior to that which we possess. Another film of great interest, similar to that which we have just seen, was made in Ecuador the 6th of September 1996 by the professor Jorge Alvarado. The object is obscured by a type of halo which makes it resemble a small cloud. 
Thanks to the presence of the tree branches, it is possible to observe fully the extremely strange movements made by the UFO. On the 16th of September 1991, during a military parade, which was taking place at Mexico City for the occasion of the Independence Day celebrations, an object was filmed passing at the same time as a fleet of 24 aeroplanes. The engineer Vincente Sanchez Guerrero was following the flight with his video camera when he noticed the presence of another object above the skies of the city. He then left the aeroplanes to concentrate on the new vehicle that after a few moments began to move towards him. This act provoked a strange phenomenon. And when it arrived closer, my camera turned itself off, indicating that the battery had run out. Strange, considering that I had charged it up only a little while ago. The loss of energy from the battery used by the engineer Sanchez is a phenomenon which has been present on many other occasions and in even clearer forms throughout the world. Cars, electrical centers and even entire cities and regions of our planet have known sudden blackouts in the presence of these objects. Events which indicate their capacity to paralyze any type of technical apparatus constructed on Earth. A capacity which has never been used to invade us or subjugate us. Yet another confirmation of the Pacific nature of the extraterrestrial presence on our planet. During the months of January 1992, other great lights were filmed surveying Mexico City, a series of events that alarmed the population. Thanks to the great investigative work of Jaime Maussan and to the vast ecological data relating to these events in the media, many people have begun to study the sky in greater detail video cameras at the ready. Some people have decided to organize themselves into actual teams to keep the sky under vigil. In this way and in this era, the group of vigilantes is born, which in the course of the years has made a number of films in which strange flying objects appear. Recently they met with Giorgio Bon Giovanni forming a collaboration that will allow us to show you exclusively the best documents made on video by this team. Now we have a film made with a Panasonic video camera at Sebastopoli, a town in Crimea, the Ukraine, in the ex-Soviet Union. The film was made by an amateur operator known as Nikolai Igorov, who gave the film personally to Giorgio Bon Giovanni, who was in Russia at the time on one of his numerous voyages. The rhomboidal form of this object has aroused some suspicion. In fact, the Panasonic technicians maintain that it could be caused by an aberration in the diaphragm of the camera. This effectively has been found to be true in a few cases, but if the object completes maneuvers that would be impossible for any type of terrestrial vehicle, such as the dematerialization of the object filmed at Sebastopoli, there cannot be any doubts as to its authenticity. Besides, the celebrated Spanish researcher Juan José Benítez conducted the analysis of this document in a Spanish military institution, which has since confirmed its authenticity. One of the characteristics that has amazed researchers is the capacity which these objects have to divide themselves into two distinct and independent parts during the flight. For the first time, we have information about this phenomenon thanks to General Vladimir Kovelyonok's testimony released by Giorgio Bongiovanni. The General had this incredible experience during the space flight in the Zoyuts, which he captained. One of the first films that shows this capacity was made in Sydney Zoo, Australia, by an Italian tourist called Giancarlo Bettini. At the beginning of the film, we can see a person who indicates in the direction of the object, clear, therefore, that the phenomenon was also noted by other witnesses. The original sound is also very interesting, from which we can deduce the surprise and bewilderment of Mr. Bertini while he was filming the unusual spectacle that he identified as, without doubt, of extraterrestrial origin. <laughs> Visitor, uh, Ron, they are visitors. Yeah? Yes, yes. UFO. Yeah, 
Juan Flores made this film in Mexico City on the 6th of January 1994. The object is static in the sky and is surrounded by a strange dark halo. Suddenly the halo disappears and, as if there was a specific relationship, immediately afterwards it divides in two. There are other videos that show a similar phenomenon, but we sustain that each, in one way or another, is different. The series of documents that we now present to you show objects that apparently fragment into numerous parts. We believe, however, that it is more likely that we are dealing with mother spaceships from which smaller objects come out. This is an event that was presented for the first time by contact George Adamski with his renowned photos. To demonstrate this type of phenomenon, we can use the following films made in Mexico and in Italy. All have been made at night, which makes the colours and luminosity of the objects even more obvious as they leave the larger vehicle. Above all, in the last video made on the shore of Ostia, near Rome, we can appreciate the great similarity with the spaceships photographed and filmed by Mexican contact Carlos Diaz. Incredible methods of transport consisting of pure light energy that, upon analysis, is very similar to that of living beings. This demonstrates a technology defined as biogenetic by the specialists and introduces us to an incredible field full of implications. Carlos Diaz has confirmed that the occupants are beings whose body structures is of the same energy as the spaceship, that is to say, light. A clear confirmation of that which Eugenio Siracusa divulged in the 60s when he confirmed that there are light beings that can manipulate this energy as we manipulate clay. If we still continue to debate between doubts and controversy over the nature of this phenomenon, perhaps we should consider that the investigative method used to analyze it has not been very well planned. Why not try to consider the subject from another point of view? Think of the UFO as only a machine, a technological container that transports an intelligence that is rational beings capable of understanding and of free will. Would it not perhaps be the case to leave behind normal technically based investigative logic about the authenticity or otherwise of the photos, films or whatever other material and seriously consider the aspects that are far more important and profound and ask oneself why they come here and what they want. Perhaps in trying to understand the logic of these beings we can have incredible and unexpected responses. I feel very profoundly that there is a strong spiritual side that we are neglecting. I would expect that an advanced civilization would look not only at engineering and biology, but at the world of the mind and the world of God, and that one of the things they aliens probably don't understand about earthlings is how we can talk so big about religion and do so little to manifest the important aspects of most religions. I believe the most important aspect to the UFO phenomena is truly the spiritual aspect of it. No obligation to humanity to go ahead and try to get the governments of the world to tell the truth and stop the pain and suffering that we create, not the UFOs, but through our denial through our greed for wanting to cover up what we know does in fact exist. Monday the 13th of March 1997, around 21.30 and 22.30 in the town of Phoenix, Arizona, various people have filmed the strange lights. In the films, apparently, it seems that an ever-increasing number of luminous objects appear. In reality, successive analyses have proved that we are dealing with lights of a single enormous object, 
that silently surveys the American city, remaining for approximately two hours in its aerial position. Its height in respect to the ground has oscillated between 600 and 1,800 meters, and its size is estimated as being around three kilometers. Its form should be that deduced by the accurate analysis carried out by the researcher Jim Dilitoso. Following research has confirmed that more than a thousand people have witnessed this same event. Hundreds of telephone calls have been made to the police stations, fire brigades and in particular to local air bases of the United States Air Force, which has declared that the gigantic aircraft has not appeared on its radar screens. There are, however, witnesses that have declared to have seen fighters take off from the base and head towards the unusual aircraft. Nevertheless, no authority has explained the real nature of the mysterious apparatus. It is an event of great importance that can be added to a considerable series of UFO cases which, during the course of the last few years, have been concentrated in the area of Phoenix. The 9th of September 1995, Victor Chiluiza, a young man from Guayaquil, Ecuador, saw above his house a light which was moving slowly in the sky. He ran into the house, got his video camera and to his surprise captured the image of this unusual UFO. When through the video camera I saw it even nearer, I realized that it did not have the typical form of a flying saucer. Another thing that hit me was that it emitted no sound. Amongst the group of people who are dancing the Macarena, there were the vice president of Ecuador's daughter and wife. At a certain point, an unusual aircraft comes into view in the sky. The video camera frames it and we can observe a shining pale yellow object of an apparent cigar-like form. In Ecuador, in the town of Cuenca, Ismael Tripaud, who was working in his garden, was then called by his daughter who had noticed the strange object in the sky. Another thing that Mr. Tripaud noticed was the way his dogs were very agitated. A further extremely strange flying object was filmed by the professor Ciro Hildalgo in the town of Rio Bamba, Ecuador. As we have been able to see, the films made in this area of Latin America are noticeable for the unusual forms that differ from previous cases of UFOs. This material was revealed thanks to the excellent research work carried out by Ecuador researcher Jaime Rodriguez. His work, also in Ecuador, is exhibiting a considerable level of sensitivity amongst the population. This opening has extended even as far as the military that have allowed their staff to openly witness direct experiences with alien aircraft. Thanks to the photos provided by contact George Adamski, from their very first appearance, the so-called cigar UFOs or mother spaceships have always generated great interest and fascination. According to the information provided by the Polish-American contact, these spaceships serve to transport great distances, the considerably smaller objects recognized as flying saucers. A few films where the exit of the smaller objects from the mothership can be seen seem to support this fact. Amongst the documents which track these spaceships, one of the most exciting was made by Tim Edwards in the town of Salida, Colorado. Researcher Tom King, Edwards' children and cook Michael Maggio also assisted at the event which took place during the morning of the 27th of August 1995. This sighting has special relevance due to the particular lights that emanate from the spaceship and the numerous objects that shoot past in the sky around this ship. This film has been accurately analysed and declared absent of forgery, which puts it amongst the best documents that historically depict this type of spaceship. In the film that we are going to see now, we can once again evaluate the effects produced by the UFO on the witness's video camera that was taping the event. 
Apart from this fact, the video interestingly shows the objects that are present, such as the mother spaceship and the other two small objects which probably come out of its interior. In this moment, we see how the video camera tends to turn itself off due to the interference provoked by the energy field of the alien aircraft. And equal to this strange thread-like form of gigantic dimensions from which smaller objects come out cannot be found amongst UFO documents that have been known up until now. Another category of flying objects discussed by George Adamski was that of small telecommanded UFOs with no crew aboard that had the job of carrying out surveys of various types. These small telemetric explorers have also been filmed and photographed by other contacts and occasional witnesses. Their dimensions can vary from a few centimetres to a few metres in diameter. These explorers in the last few years have come ever closer to the urban centres sometimes literally flying at the height of rooftops or even closer to our roads. Another sign that shows the continuing closeness of this civilization to mankind. We can consider this video made in San Paulo, Brazil on the 2nd of January 1998 in the area of Capo Redondo to be amongst the most relevant documents that show these explorers. It is also of great interest for the nearness of the object to the population of the town. The number of witnesses that have cited the evolution of this object is considerable, a fact that has been made possible apart from its closeness due also to the long span of time that the sighting lasted. It took approximately half an hour for the various evolutions to be completed above the houses of Capo Redondo. The object, of approximately 20 centimeters in size, emitted no sound and was situated approximately 200 metres from the young witness, Alan Bruno de Oliveira. The movements that the small aircraft made have all the characteristics of an intelligent hand, which can easily deduce how to avoid obstacles with agility when they appear in front of the aircraft and is evidently of autonomous flight control, indicated by the presence of its own propulsion. These particular explorers have also been seen in Mexico. Also in this country, in their evolutions, they come ever closer to the inhabitants of the town. A fact that, we confirm, should induce profound reflection as to the real significance of this presence and what such a great increase of their activity could imply. According to many experts, notwithstanding the stonily silence and discredit realized by the government, a sufficiently large number of people have been able to understand and accept this reality. People are ready enough as regards accepting the existence of these objects. Our work is scarcely started. We have worked to demonstrate the reality of the phenomenon. Now we must work to try and demonstrate to people what their objective is, why they come and why they have had relationships with our humanity since the beginning of history. At Mexico City, while an exhibition of military helicopters was being filmed, an object of apparently metallic structure passed suddenly in the middle of the terrestrial aircraft to the amazement of the pilots who were witness to the event. It is a solid object. We can in fact see it fly off cleanly against the dark profile of one of the helicopters. It has a diagonal descending trajectory and is probably powered by its own propulsion as it is not at all disturbed by the strongly motioned vortices generated by the helicopter blades between which it passes. This fact denotes also that it cannot be a weather balloon, a hot air balloon or any other gas-filled object. We can observe now these shining spheres elegantly alighting near the foot of the volcano Popocatépetl in Mexico. The great interest manifested by the UFO, or rather by their occupants for volcanic areas, is part of the history of the UFOs. Based on information divulged from contacts, the reason for this attention 
is research by attentive monitoring of volcanic activity that could become suddenly violent due to great imbalances produced by underground nuclear explosions in the magmata stratum of the planet. This is information that, once again, shows us the lack of knowledge with which man plays with the stability of the only place in which he can live, a concept that played an integral part in the life of past cultures, such as that of the Native Americans. But it's saying that we're all related, we're all related as human beings, but we're all related with everything else that lives and breathes on this planet. We're related to the trees, we're related to the sand and the moon, to Grandmother Earth, to the air, to all the two-leggeds and all the four-leggeds, and every animal that walks or flies or swims or crawls, we're all related. This last document shows us once again one of these explorers that flies at a very low altitude above the Mexican town of Guadalajara. The moment in which it passes behind the advertising board gives us the exact height at which the small UFO flies and its true dimensions. The last two documents filmed that we will show of this particular type of apparatus were made two days apart at Mexico City in 1998. In these, perhaps for the first time in the history of UFOs, we can see an unidentified flying object in full daylight and on different dates, filmed near the same building. In the first video, the object remains static beside the building. When the witness zooms in on the image, we can see more clearly the strong rose-coloured light emitted from the sphere. In the second film, made two days later, we can see initially a dark object cross the sky. After a brief flight, it begins to descend in altitude, and we can see the change in the luminosity of the object. After a small and indecisive slide, we can see it, once again, come next to the same building featured in the previous film. In this case, we do not have the same spectacular view as in the film of Las Lomas, but the importance is definitely considerable as evidence of the strange nature of these objects. Featured amongst the most interesting cases of contact, from the point of view of photographic documentation, in the light of the last few years, is, without the shadow of a doubt, Mexican Raul Dominguez's film. Apart from the classic flying saucers, Dominguez has also photographed spherical ships such as those seen in the films. The photos, as we can see, are very clear. They appear to be objects of metallic nature a supposition upheld also by the reflection of the sky on their upper parts and of the ground on their lower parts. Dominguez has revealed to have seen these objects become suddenly transparent when an aeroplane came close and then once again become of metallic appearance when the terrestrial aircraft have moved away. In these photos taken by two different people still in the area of Ocotlan, we can see flying saucers that are identical to those photographed by Dominguez. After having taken these photos, some members of the Mexican Delgadillo family began to live a contact experience with beings of the other worlds. A final sign of great activity carried out by these beings in Mexico. The phenomenon of the crop circles has for several years continued to cause interest and fascination. One of the most esteemed experts on a worldwide level is the engineer Colin Andrews. In a recent interview, he responded voicing his opinion of the future evolution of the phenomenon. What I'm feeling at a deeper level is that the manifestation in the fields will hop and jump from the fields to the sky. That's my feeling. I, I feel that what we have been seeing on the ground as a focus will move to another dimension. I, I think it's any moment, almost any time. The flotillas and the video of the UFO filmed in Brazil could be an example of that declared by Colin Andrews. UFOs, crop circles, Maya prophecies, divine apparitions, religious signs, an extraordinary group of superhuman manifestations in the same historic period. Could there be a single invisible thread that links them? Could we be dealing with different aspects of a single cause that wants to warn us of something? Crop circles are part of it. Uh -huh. 
the UFOs in the skies are part of it. The appearance of the beautiful lady all over the world is a part of it. It's all connected together. It's all part of the same phenomenon. And it's a subtle and yet loving and a gentle way of saying, children wake up. The world is going to change. Events are going to take place that you're not prepared for. The considerable variety of forms and dimensions of the alien objects seen during this period create great interest. This variety has no equivalent in previous UFO case studies. Naturally, numerous UFOs of classic flying saucer form have also been seen and filmed. Surely the clearest case, verified up until now, is that of Las Lomas, but there are many other documents that show the classic flying saucer flying above our skies. This exceptional film was made in Mexico, in Juarez City. We present you with a brief summary of a long sequence where you can see a UFO of the classic priest's hat form fly low above the Mexican city. In the final part of the film, we can see the UFO ascend towards greater heights. The following images were taken in Germany on the 29th of May 1993, in the suburbs of the town of Stuttgart. The original sound gives us an impression of the great excitement of the person who taped the unusual phenomenon. This interesting film was made in England in 1997. The flying object that we can catch a glimpse of through the tree branches shows a great similarity with the flying disc filmed in Germany that we have just seen. There's a spaceship over there. In the original sound, we can hear the voice of one of the two young witnesses who identified the object as an extraterrestrial vehicle. The films that we will now see come once again from Juarez City and were made in 1997. They are two videos made during the same evening and show the same object taped by different people in different areas of the city. The UFO is very similar to that shown previously, filmed in the same city in 1993. Practically identical aircraft were also taped in Toronto, Canada in 1997 and by a Mexican couple in the town of Miami, Florida. As anticipated at the beginning of this documentary, the video of Las Lomas has caused a stir in the UFO environment worldwide, causing great controversy as to its authenticity or otherwise. In this case, apart from the video proof, which is quite clear, we have the testimony of at least 12 people and there could be many more in the area where the sighting took place. The analysis which have been conducted throughout the world by different experts, amongst which featured Bruce Maccabee, who is one of the most respected of the United States, and Jim Delitoso, and many others. Victor Quezada, in Mexico, and Michael Heisman, and all of them have verified that the object is real. All this leads us to understand that the role of the investigator is more important than the proof itself.
We now present some of the statements released to Jaime Maussan by some witnesses to the UFO of Las Lomas in order to personally convince ourselves of their validity. What did you see on the 6th of August? It was an enormous object that turned very quickly. I was at home. I went outside. I looked at the sky and saw an enormous object. Seeing it, I remained paralyzed. The only thing that I noticed is that it turned very quickly. The color was metallic gray. It was round. It moved, oscillating and rotating quickly. It was there, above that building. Not in this, but in the middle of those three. Yesterday we showed a video on television. Did you see it? No. You haven't seen the images that are on the video? No. I only told my father, but he didn't believe me. He even started laughing, telling me that it wasn't true. But when you came, I said, you see that it was true? He said, yes, I see that they are investigating. Mr. Arturo Garcias, a restaurateur whose business is in front of the building where the abnormal aircraft showed, was also a witness. Suddenly, in those buildings, I saw something that moved so I looked more closely and I understood that there was something that was flying above them. You could see a type of plate that was floating in the air and moving in an abnormal way in respect to any terrestrial flying object. Another interesting testimony that supports the authenticity of the Las Lomas event was provided by a girl who was in one of the buildings above which the probable extraterrestrial object was hovering. Having seen the Maussan program about the Las Lomas UFO, she describes the phenomena that was not spoken about in the transmission. On the day of the 6th of August, I was doing some university work. I was taking some photos. At a certain point, I saw a very strange shadow. In that moment, I turned towards the sky and I saw a very dense solid cloud. I thought that it couldn't be a cloud, it seemed to be falling from the sky. I didn't understand what was happening. Then I realized that it was a UFO. I saw that it was solid and shone. It didn't have lights, but it was very bright. It was suspended, but at the same time you could see that it was turning very quickly, so quickly that you couldn't really see it rotating, but you could feel it in the air from all it emitted. You could feel that it turned. You heard a sound like a gas leak. Yes, constant and also as if it were oscillating. In that moment I noticed that all the pets and animals were as if mad. The dogs, the cats, running from one part to another. I was frightened. The dog's behavior made me react and I thought that I should take a photo. I tried to get my camera, but as there was a lot of confusion, I didn't find it straight away. When I got it, I turned to take a photo. I saw only a light that was going away very fast. You couldn't distinguish its shape anymore. It was more like a light, something shiny, silvery, very strong. I was wearing a short-sleeved top, and when I looked in the mirror, I had lines as if I had got a tan whilst wearing the top. In the course of the research conducted by Jaime Maussan and his team, other witnesses came forward who have confirmed the declarations by the witnesses that we have heard, and the case of Las Lomas is credited with ever more validity and proof in the face of criticism making it amongst the most extraordinary cases of confirmation of the real presence of extraterrestrial civilizations on our planet. So, I've tested the image for its stability about whether it could be connected with a string or not. And I am very certain that there is no string that's connected that it's moving on. 
that it's not like that, that there's no evidence that it's a fake. And it's not possible physically for a balloon to move in the way the object moves. The object is standing on an invisible column of force of some kind that holds it up off the ground. This is why, as it moves across the top of the building, it tilts back and forth. It's, it's moving the force field along to crawl forward. On balance, I'm quite sure that this video is authentic. The internet is, apart from anything else, an extraordinary method of information diffusion. But it can also be a very valid instrument of misinformation and discredit in the hands of those that wish to disavow and ridicule this very important phenomenon. It is necessary, therefore, to have great responsibility and discernment when considering certain items. An example is the case of a self-styled unknown American researcher called Liz Edwards, who, with a hazarded theory, makes out to have found a method in which, according to her, you could falsify the videos of Las Lomas even at home. The accusation is made based on only a few photos of a very low resolution taken from the internet and without presenting any valid proof of the quality of obtainable results with her method. Through the explanations released by the Professor Quesada, we can get a clearer idea of what is required to carry out significant and thought-out research on any case to be examined. Up until now, this is one of the best films that I have ever analysed, and it is satisfying all the tests run, based upon which I can find no evidence of fraud. What people can say about an image they have seen on television is one thing. It is quite another to work, see the area, and be in the city where the fact has taken place. Speaking of what Edwards has proposed, would it technically be possible, or is it really a hazarded hypothesis? I would like to see the video made by her in that way and let it undergo the same analysis that we are carrying out. We want to work thoroughly. We must work at the source, or as near as possible to the original, possibly with a video that is not shown via internet, because these are made up of photos of very low quality. Then they are also compressed to reduce the space they can occupy on the web page. That means that we can't carry out serious investigations sat behind a desk? I think that sometimes to research sat behind a desk is to deceive oneself. A true and serious investigator, to have information, analyzes all the evidence and sources that he possesses. The exceptional nature of the Las Lomas object is lastly proven by submitting the video image to the action of ultraviolet and infrared filters. In one of these tests, the object disappears momentarily from the screen. In this way, manifesting incomprehensible properties based on current scientific knowledge. What we can see here is very interesting. With this filter, the object can no longer be seen. The only thing that we are able to see are the points of luminosity that it has in front and behind. Here, our visual spectrum is voided, and the only thing that you can see is where the object emits light. If this video were to have been a sequence of computer data, it would have remained more constant. It would not be very simple to make these variations. The Las Lomas case continues to cause a stir in the interior of the entire UFO community, as well as amongst the television public, for its extraordinary components that refute any attempt to discredit it. Researchers such as Jaime Malsan can be considered as the pioneers of new journalism for the third millennium, a journalism based on research that stimulates reflection about important facts that are taking place in front of our very eyes. A journalism that wants to prove the truth, free from ties and outside interests. The idea, the finality of reawakening the conscience of everyone that can see and listen to our programs because, as we have said, we are not the last generation and people, children who are not yet born, have rights that must be respected. UFOs show themselves. They are seen by thousands of people the world over. Simple men, professionals, 
Airplane pilots, military forces, astronauts, scientists and contacts have seen and borne witness to the reality of this presence. They are photographed and filmed. They leave tangible signs of their objective nature. But still the powers that be are obstinate in their denial and denigration of the truth. They hide, ridicule and persecute those who with real determination would want to reawaken the conscience of the masses to this specific and extraordinary presence. We feel with ever greater urgency the need for change, to change our life, to find once again a true contact with nature, to know the most profound intimacy of ourselves and to make the most of the beauty of creation. A creation where intelligent life expresses its infinite worlds and comes to us with a message of peace and the desire to see us finally free from the absurd fears and false values that have made our life unhappy and our world a mother in agony. We would want that these travellers through space show themselves clearly, but in what spirit would they be received? Are we sure that we are ready for such a contact? It is very probable instead that we would be terrified, paralysed through uncontrollable fear, from the fear that we would be enslaved, tortured, made into vampires, as in the most vulgar and stupid science fiction films. We are not yet ready, this is the sad truth. Our nightmares, the true monsters, are within us, and amongst us, it is with them that we feed a lack of trust, deceit, death and destruction. If we do not free ourselves from our internal and material chains and do not once again become like children, as we were taught to do by a great master who came 2,000 years ago, that is to say Jesus Christ, we will not know the kingdom of heaven, a kingdom whose inhabitants in peace and concordance would want to welcome us, to be finally united, true companions in an extraordinary adventure called life.